hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna be giving you part five of what if naruto was an elite blue eye uchiha remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual share this to all of your friends in social media platform and also guys stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming over in anime king 3 and anime king 2 yes if you're wondering i have three channel anime king anime king 2 and anime king 3 all links will be down in the description for you guys to enjoy so go over there and click that red subscribe button what ifs on a daily basis for you guys to enjoy so sit back relax and i hope if you're not having a good day this can make it a little bit better and if you're having a good day i'm happy for you guys so yeah without further ado would you still begin this new episode start the intro So, the last time we left off, Kushina had to break away from Naruto, seeing that door open up and Kurnai was standing there. As Naruto went inside, he was targeted by sister Mikoto, as she was cursing at him. Everyone tried not to look but they were glancing at the corner of their eyes. Mikoto was angry, not to mention he took Sasuke with him and now his license as a shinobi has been revoked. But Naruto said one word to her that made her shut up that she was a traitor to her blood. She glanced around if anyone heard him, but no one did, as she was angry at that once again. She would be coming begging soon for him to, well, not tell the clan elders. After all, the Uchiha clan was rather strict when it comes to betraying her blood. She was the one that went to Minato and told him about Naruto taking therapy. And the elders, something like that would have the person that is irresponsible, their eyes removed and banished from the clan. So yes, she will be coming to him soon to beg him not to tell the elders about what she has done. It was then that Inuichi came up to Naruto as he was going to recommend a new therapist for Naruto. Naruto didn't believe one bit that the man was the one that told Minato, but duties were duties as he will never break confidentiality with Naruto and open his file for Minato to see, no matter what. But on the other note, he will have to side with the Hokage, despite not opening her to file. As Naruto could understand that, Uncle then came in as she was rather drunk, as she was calling Naruto Horsey. As many people quickly understand what that meant when Uncle refer downstairs. She was taken to the kitchen so they can get her sober up. At the office, Minato was fuming. Minato has always been jealous of Naruto, as he met him some time ago while well, he didn't talk to him. Jiraiya had showed him the boy. Naruto was the one that killed all the kidnappers that tried to take away Kushner. Minato was the one that dealt with the last one that was holding on to her. So he was seen as the one that saved her. But Naruto was the one that picked all of them down from the Hokage's tower. Minato was beyond jealous of the boy. He was so young and yet so much more advanced than him. It made Minato angry. That is why he just hate Naruto. There was many reasons. But the most common reason was he was jealous. But even he knew not to mess with Naruto if he got angry. That is why he's waiting for Naruto to lose it and attack him first. So he can put his full force down on Naruto. And either get him exiled or killed. As he really hated Naruto at that point. There was a reason though why people didn't want him to get angry. After all, when he was angry he stopped. Well, he stopped being human. As we went into a flashback. As Naruto went on a mission with Yujiu. And the Hokage had sent Tenzo along with them. The third had been in control back then. As they were supposed to get some information. The town that the three Yakuza's were under control. Kumo ninjas were there. They couldn't start anything because. Well the Yakuza's. And no Kage would go up against them. They would rather leave the Shinobis there to face the punishment. Tenzo was rather nervous about all of this. As the place was surrounded by Kumo ninjas. And it was just the three of them. But still, they wouldn't attack them, as Naruto was looking for his informant. 
as Yu Jae asked if she could get something to drink, but she was still underage, making Naruto say that she was too young. And the DJ was none other than Killer B, as he pumped life into the party, even though the man didn't really sound good rapping at all. So, yeah, guys, those base guys were left off. You guys can switch across the place and check out for yourself. So, what do you say, begin this new episode? So, said Yu Jae could you get us some drinks? Under eight drinking, said Naruto, acting shock, for shame. Well, you know how it goes. Old enough to kill, old enough to drink, she said. Barley wine, please, she said. Fenzo interrupted. No drinking while on a mission, he said. Boo, said Eugeo. Leave a little Tenzo, as he frowned back at her. You know, I'm starting to think that you were the one that put that stick up your ass, she said. Watch your tongue, Eugeo, he said. But she did not back down. All right, all right. No fighting, said Naruto, stopping the argument between them. If you two are going to act like little kids, I'll get the both of you apple juice, he said. The both of them looked at him, but shh, he said, keep your eyes on your drinks. They rape people in the back of this club. He looked at the unconvinced Yamato. You know, I'm talking to you, right? Watch yourself. Rape me? Yamato said, as Naruto was acting like he was defenseless or something. These people can sniff out Taurus, Blue said to Finality, ending the conversation. As Naruto held on to Yujiro's arm, as he leaned towards her, she placed her hand right at his mouth so that she could block his lips from sight so no one could read them. Don't let Tenzo out of your sight, he whispered. So I'm babysitting now, she muttered back, coughing her own mouth. Tenzo raised a curious eyebrow at them. I know you can handle yourself here, said Naruto. You don't look like a mark, but he does. Yujiro sighed. All right, fine. You've convinced me, she said. He patted her shoulder. Thanks, kid, he said. Your apple juice will be here in a minute. Hey, he backed away from her before she could grab his collar as he eased into the crowd. Her eyes followed Blue until she could no longer see him as he was lost within the crowd. A minute later, a pale-skinned man in a white jeans and tank top walked towards the table with two glass in his hand. As he set them down on the table, his voice sounded rather dull. Apple juice from Blue, already paid for, he said. Yuji would sniff. Huh, I didn't think he was serious. She pushed away the apple juice. Thanks, she said. The man nodded and simply went back to where he was coming from. She grabbed onto Tenzo's wrist as he lifted the apple juice towards his lips. He spat in them. Huh? He placed it back to the table. Why? They probably know that we're leaf ninjas. We're not very popular here, you know? As Tenzo glanced, all the Kumo ninjas that were there were glaring at them. It seems that man worked for them as well. That is why Naruto told them to watch out. Someone then came over to the table, pushing up his black glasses. It was the A-tail, Jinjuliki, as he placed his hands flat on the table. Yujiro did so as well, showing the sign of non-aggression. But Tenzo did not, as he had his palms at his side, clenching. Yujiro looked at the DJ on the spin table, as she realized that the one who was hyping up the people was a clone, as he winked at her. The real one was standing in front of her. Didn't know they let leaves come in here, the man said, his voice carrying over the sound. As Eugeo said nothing as she just looked at him. For a leaf scum, you look good, but you know how you would look better. As Eugeo looked at Tenzo for him to calm down, hanging from a tree with a noose around your neck. Screw off, dude, said Eugeo. Or did you forgot where you were? B simply looked at her. Hm. Leaf shit that is scared of the three Yakuza. I know when not to fight if that is what you mean. Only non-assets are scared of the three Yakuza. The big boss from Blue Typhoon. Lightning Yakuza. He don't mind if we kill you too. He doesn't want us harming the blue guy though. Yujiro took her arm off the table. Both her and Tenzo looked up as they saw the Yakuza there walking away. You see, Milton and Mikaze killed the big boss, little sister. Your precious leaf pissed off the wrong person, I say. He sigh, I don't know why he doesn't want us to kill a blue guy. But who am I to complain? Two Konoha crap on one night. I'm game. The music lowered. And some people wearing dark, yellow dress shirts under black suits start to usher all the party goers out of the club. Yujiro stepped away from the table and so did Tenzo. As she reached towards the seal on her wrist, oof, her katana came out quickly as she grabbed onto the hilt. Tenzo's arms hardened and turned a light shade of brown 
elongated until his knuckles scrape the ground. Killer B slapped the table away and moved forward as Kumo ninjas rained down from the second balcony. While the Killer B clone was still scratching plates on his paint table, you guys picked the wrong night to go out clubbing. So we walked into a Kumo trap, she said, as she pulled out the katana, the silver blade glistening by the lights. Nah, this is just a really lucky coincidence, said B. Meanwhile, in the bathroom, as Blue was taking a pee, as he was whistling a jaunty tune, got any tissue in there, a female voice said, to the stall next to him. He looked at the holster. Nope. These things never have any toilet paper. The lady in the stall next to him giggled. Thank God if there are even toilets in this place. Accident, said Blue. Something like that, she said. I've got sealing paper, if that's any help, he said. Do you have any idea how scratchy those are? It's like getting road rush. Believe me, stranger, I know. As he finished and zipped up his pants, want it or not, please. He pulled up his right sleeve as he unsealed it from the storage seal as he tossed it. He heard her fumbling as she caught it. Thanks, she said. He exit as he made his way toward the sink as he washed his hand with his gloves on. He flashed his hand as steam started to come from his gloves, drying them. The flame resistant seal drawn in the gloves. The only thing that could literally burn them was a phoenix ash fire. It required a lot of chakra and a maximum amount of endurance to keep it going a strong fire. As he looked into the mirror, are we alone? He said, yes, we're alone. I check. So what do you have for me? Said Blue. Brace yourself, man, the lady said. As you know, Kumu has been very quiet in these past few months and the stone has been increasing the number of attacks on Konoha and Konoha allies covering for the lightning village. I know, said Naruto. It is because Lord A is running out of capable shinobi to send to the front. If he's running out of shinobi, then why is Killer B here when he can be somewhere else where his strength can be for greater use, said Naruto. As a matter of fact, I think I saw some of your other comrades in the club. I'm getting to that, she said. Then, said Blue. You might not know this, but the hidden stone is all size, no substance, in other words, quantity, over quality. I mean, not in their shinobis or anything special, not even in their julikis, except from when they channel the tail beast power. If you can throw a punch, throw a kunai, and not trip over your feet, you're qualified to be a shinobi there. Well, that explain why they have so many ninjas, but none of them are really powerful, said Naruto. Well, it doesn't mean that they don't have any strong ninjas, like Mew, Lady of the Silt, and like two or maybe three others. My point is, they have abundance of disposable shinobi, while Lord Eighth chose quality over quantity. The people are losing faith in him though, because they're losing too many people, too fast. Lord Killer B and the others are passing through to fire country to assassinate the fire Yakuza, son, and frame it on a leaf shinobi, probably someone famous like Minato Namikaze. Blue remained quiet as he looked at his reflection in the mirror and waiting for his contact to continue. That's not all though, A has convinced Oniki to spare him a few of his disposable shinobi and place them in important place to Konoha, the lime grove in Hidden, Salt Country, the Fog Hill in Kiri, and the Crystal Line in Waterfall Country. Those three places was where the Third Okage Order the shinobi to reduce their presence in. The leaders of those places had pleaded for the third to keep some of his shinobi there. But he said that they were no longer hot places because all the war there had calmed down. Oniki lent Lord A about 10,000 of his men. How are they moving that many people so quietly, said Naruto. Lord A appointed two of his best men to guide a small force of 20 stone beat shield at a time. As Naruto was taken aback as realization hit him, that is why Kumo has been so silent for the past months and the stone has been making so much noise to cover their track. Precisely, the lady said. I am one of the captains in the regiment in Lime Grove in a mile, 92 meters in West Zieke. She stopped speaking as she heard a hard thump against the bathroom door. What was that? She said. She started to panic. Did you sell me out? Blue spinner around and she kicked the door open, his hand raised with genuine confusion. I swear you, Jito, I didn't sell you out. The blonde, Jinjolti of the two-tailed cat, pulled up her pants. Then what the heck was that she said, as she came over and washed her hands quickly. 
85 no said Naruto. As she zipped up her snow white, Kumo jacket, as she smoothed herself down, prim and proper Yujito. That was how he knew her. The 16 year old girl adjusted herself in the mirror, fixing her headband, as she saw Naruto eyes reflected towards her in the mirror. Did you rat me out? Of course not, she said. Lord Killer B doesn't even know I'm in Zeki for crying out loud. As she fixed her face, as she fixed her hair, you remember that time I saved your skinny ass from Lord A? Blue draw back with a sigh. Yeah, he said. At the start of the year, a year ago, he was traveling with the Zika clan. The nomadic desert people who produce wonderful goat milk. They had been moving from west to east, and the Raikage was coming down from north to east with his people. The Raikage had bullied the desert, clan out of their water and some goats, to use for meat. The man had felt a feel in his guts that he was a Kanoha ninja hiding within the clan. Yujito had saw him. As Blue was in disguise, the people had dressed him up like them, hoping that the Raikage would notice a 15 year old boy and try to kill him. Blue was no match for the Raikage, well, not then. Yujito pretended to receive a SOS call from Grass. The Raikage, who had received the Grass territory from the Grass Daimyo because of what he did for his man, didn't want the place to be ruined as he quickly made his way, allowing Nurta the people to get away. A was pissed off when he realized nothing had happened there. But luckily, she didn't get demoted. It might not seem like it right now, she said, but you and I are what normal people call work buddies. As she smirked, if not for this war, and we had met under better circumstances, I think we would have been more couple-like, she said. Blue made his way towards the door as he pressed his ear against it as he heard the music lower outside. Couple-like? You and me, he said. She crossed her arms, feeling a bit upset by the way he said it. Yes, couple-like. Back home, I got guys coming at me, from left and right. I am really good looking. She slowly turned around in a circle, as Blue draw a kunai from his sleeve. I'm everything a guy would want, and you. You're a little bit presentable, just a teeny tiny bit, she said. Well, what if I'm not interested in being in a couple-like relationship, he said. As he turned the knob of the bathroom door, but he did not budge. Mm -hmm. Why won't you? I'm smoking hot, she said. As she flipped her hair back. And besides, didn't you say that Kushina girl is going out with the yellow flash? I did, he said. As he slammed his shoulder into the door. But he did not budge. Then your other friend too, the cat girl. You're not interested in her either. Are you? You, Jeyo? She's like a sister to me, said Naruto. Well, as far as I know, those are my two only competitors. And it seems that they're not in the game. So I'm sure I can make you fall for me. After all. I have a lot of sex appeal, she said. Blue simply scoffed. Well, I'm not denying anything, he said. There was another hard thump against the door. It sounded like a human body was thrown on it. As he brought out his hunter named Mass, it was eggshell white, with no mouth or nose, two black ring, eye holes for the eyes. He didn't know if the fight has anything to do with UJ or Tenzo, but if he was going to get out of there, he didn't want to be recognized on the spot. Thankfully, those that saw him wearing the mask, Never saw the next day, so he was confident that they wouldn't recognize him. We can talk about dating later, as he pointed towards a small window leading outside of the club. Climb out that way, there should be a drain pipe for you to scale down on, or use your chakra. It's up to you, but make sure no one sees you. Blue, this is for your own safety, Yujito, he said. As his Sharingan flared to life, she saw the dark look. As he turned back towards the door, he saw there was a lock and seal on it, meaning only one thing. They wanted him to remain inside. He wasn't a target. Yujiyo and Tenzo was. You said Killer B doesn't know that you're in Zeke. Let's keep it that way. Thud. Another body slammed into the door from the outside. Fine. Tell me your answer later, she said. She climbed up the wall. As she slipped out the window with pure silence and the agility of a cat as she was gone. Later, Naruto would find out that his contact from Kumo, Yujito, literally had no idea there would be so much Kumo ninjas in the club that night. Blue became more alarmed when the Sharingan couldn't cut through the thick aids of chakra around the locking seal. As he pulled his fist back, boom, he smashed his other fist into it as the door rippled from the strain. As he brought his foot up and finished it with a hard spot, a kick right in the center. Boom, the seal shattered like glass and door was blown off his hinges, crushing into a Kumo ninja as the man splattered on the wall. As Naruto hunched, Shadow figure stepped out of the bathroom. 
its silhouette, causing all the fighting to come to a stop. Its hands close into a fist, its blue sharing gun spinning wildly. What the hell is going on? Standing on top of a hill of bloody bodies, Yujito had her katana in her hand as she just got into a Kumo swordsman abdomen as she heard his voice. Killer B used her distraction to shorten his distance between him and her. Naruto eyes widen as B smashed her into the ground and stepped into her right knee, bending her leg at an odd angle. He grabbed her by her ear and lifted her up in the ear as her bloodshot eye and her bruised face was on full display. B didn't have any injuries because he had stayed back and allowed the Kumo ninjas to do the work. But he was happy that his first attack against her was a success. One guess on Tenzo's whereabouts was a gaping hole in the wall where trees was outside. As B looked towards the Sharingan, Hey, hey, just walk away, man. This doesn't concern... He couldn't get to finish a sentence as blue eyes turned and twisted as he turned into the Mongetio. As he placed his arms together into the tiger seal. Projection. Another, Naruto appeared in front of Killer B, his fist coated with red and blue flames smashed into B's face. The newly appeared Naruto caught Yuji in his arms as B smashed his hands in the ground to stop his momentum from going in too far. As he was outside the club, he had went straight through the hole that Tenzo had created. The tail beast inside his stomach started to heal its broken, twisted nose from that punch and the burn mark over his face as well. The first, Naruto crumbled into nothing, leaving behind the real Naruto, holding on to Yuji in his arms, his eyes returning back to normal. Projection, another ability from Naruto Sharingan. It was a perfect clone, more perfect than the Shadow clone or a blood clone combined. As long as he could see the destination even while looking through his launcher, he could summon a perfect clone to anywhere as long as he could see the place. That clone could serve as the original or a support, but whenever or a role was assigned to them, if the summoner was killed, that clone would remain and live as the original for the rest of his life. For instance, if he was surrounded by an army, he could look up a hill and project himself there. The summoner, the one that summoned the clone could get killed. If that was to happen, the summon blue would take his place. It didn't take that much chakra to do it, but the downside of it was. It damaged his eye, deteriorating his eyesight. But at the moment, he didn't hear as his blood was boiling. As he looked down towards Yujiro, his eyes darkened. A hazy, blue, reddish flame surrounded him. As B was calling him by the remaining ninjas, as blue started to change as Yujiro gasped as she saw it happening. His unruly, blonde, black hair with that blonde strip in the center. The entire black start to bleach into a bright blonde. His hair even extended, going down to his neck. He brought his hand up to his face. His gloves start to melt off his arms. His heat resistant gloves. As his fingers could be seen, they were covered in scales, gold black scales, and his nails became long to rip into flesh. Black reptilian scales ran down his face, missing his lips, going down his chin, like the scales of a snake. A massive grin spread across his face, showing sharp dagger teeth and a dark blue flickering tongue as his mask lowered down on his face. Yuji was shocked to what her best friend just turned into, as his Sharingan darkened and spin, created a sound that sounded like death itself. He reached forward. As he placed his hand on her face slightly, as she felt his hand it was cold. Despite his body seemed like it was in flames, it didn't hurt her. It felt calm and warm. Close your eyes, kid, he said. Short for a kitten, that was his nickname to her. She nodded as she closed her eyes. As he pulled his hunter in mask back on his face and stood up, his back turned to Killer B. He then turned as he ran forward. Any Kumo ninjas that stand in his path. He tore through them like a wild animal. Yujiro heard the cries of suffering. She heard agony. She heard hunger. She could feel the bloodlust, the malice. As she could feel the ear tainted with pure evil and death. Off in the distance she heard the cry of crows. A large gathering of crows. 
the summoning animal for the god of death itself. Her eyes were closed so she could not see the scene in front of her, but her mind was painting a picture of what she could hear. Bloody carnage. Blue slammed his head right into a kunoichi, cracking her skull as he stomped into a man's back, severing his spinal cord. Before he ducked, as he ripped a man's legs right off underneath him and he stabbed the man through his eyes. As something smacked across his shoulder, the man stepped back in fear. His katana that was coated in lightning chakra broke on impact with Blue's neck. Blue turned towards him as the man fell over as he tripped over one of the many bodies. Blue only needed one hand sign, only one. Fire release. Phoenix Ash Fire, he said. The man was burned into nothing but ash. His entire body melted away. Blue stepped back as he started to charge him again from a punch, come to the right as he stabbed into the joints of the arm. As the Kunoichi cried in pain before he slashed right through her throat. As she fell down gasping, blood pouring out, he spin. His body was in hands as he turned, gripping onto a man's neck, pulling his body back so far a snapping sound could be heard. He used the man's body as a bat as he slammed it into several other Kumo ninjas. He tear off a Kunoichi arm as he batted several ninjas across the face with it. Blood splattered all over his mask, all over his body as he was coated in it. The Kumo ninjas that remained took a step back in fear of this animal that was tearing through them. He threw away the arm and stepped over the shinobi crushed head. He extended his arm as the hellfire around him started to increase. It was rolling off of him in tentacles. The group shuffled back again in fear. Scared, he said. The left side of his mask started to melt as his dojutsu could be seen. Bugs, you insects, piss me off. The face they saw on the left side of his face drove the fear of coming into their hearts. The long, reptilian tongue from his mouth went straight down towards his chest, flickering. His teeth were like knife. His eyes snapped towards them, shaking them to their core. As he hunched over as hellfire started to leak from his mouth. He laughed, his laughter sounding psychotic as it grated into their hearts. He's just one guy, Killer B said, as he made his way to the front, ushering a shinobi in the front to fall back. This is all for show, said B. Blue raised the eyebrow as he looked up, his eyes still spinning as he looked over B. But B wondered, could this be why the Yakuza, why the author Yakuza specifically asked them to not touch a blue one? The Jinjuki would later find out that Urchimaru had pulled some strings so that her son would not be involved in the fury of the Yakuza's, as she already had ties with the three Yakuza's at that point. But that really didn't matter now. Not know at all. Tail Beast Chakra covered B as the Hellfire Runner to extended. B quickly saw that his blades had no chance against his skin. But between him and Blue, someone was gonna die tonight. The battle would have burned Zeki to the ground. Blue, I shimmer as a otherworldly heat pulse upwards coming from the ground. All of the Kumo ninjas, including B, feel like they were dying over and over as they were feeling anguish, pain and suffering. They were seeing him, decapitating them, ripping their spines, tearing their organs out, feasting on it. None of them could escape this godforsaken illusion, agony and pain as they were watching their fingernails being plucked before driving into their skull one by one. Some of them couldn't take any more as they saw a blade on the ground, they picked it up and stabbed it through their chin. But they wouldn't die as they did it over and over again, still trapped in the illusion. For Killer B, he was made to watch all of this from a first person vantage point. Sharingan Genjutsu were made to be passing the pain and the feeling it could be broken but what they were seeing it was like reality and illusion were mixed together they couldn't tell if it was real or if it was fake. Some of them wet themselves, even crapped themselves as they dropped towards their knees begging to be released. Killer B swallowed thickly as Blue cocked his head to the side, a twisted grin on his face. Death is not the end, bug. The dam are at the mercy of the fire. The humor, the joy that he felt that the fear was too much for him to contain as he started to laugh psychotically. This is crazy, B said. Fighting it. 
The beast within him certainly did shock our own B, but he was still seeing the images. The Axa B knew that B didn't stand a chance in hell. The only way for him to get out of his safe was to release him and for him to turn fully. But Killer B was worried about his comrades and the casualties because he would crush them if he do. As the Axa B told him to flee immediately, but he refused to flee as he couldn't believe Leaf had this sort of secret weapon. Could the blue guy be as strong as the nine kills? Could their power even be compared? He didn't want to compare it and he didn't want to find out. Meanwhile, Yamato had took Yujiro and flee into the nightclub with her to get her away from all this as he heard the screams. As there was a mighty crack and B felt fire as Blue had slammed his hot shoulder right into B's chest, picking him up off his feet and running him through several cool motion obis as they were crushed under the man's weight. As he lost count of how many trees how many buildings he broke through as he was carried off the momentum blue running at terrible speed carrying him away b raised his hand and slammed him on naruto's back only for it to hit tough scales as naruto's hands and feet moved like blur b was hit and knocked around his body slamming against the hard concrete and the flames were still around naruto burning him each time they hit him as the Haxa B tried his best to heal the 4th degree burns that was coming on B's body. B tried to fight back but Naruto seemed to be completely unaffected by the Haxa B's shocker at all. Weak. B dropped down towards a marble slap. He tilted his head as Naruto's fist cracked the wall where his head should be. Naruto stepped back and drive a brutal spot a kick right in the center of B's chest. Killer B broke through the hard marble stone as he rolled and collapsed face first as his chakra cloak flicker off as he lost consciousness. Blue moved forward the flames around him dancing wildly but he stopped when a fully transformed Nibi stepped between them. Hold it the beast said Yujito as she was inside of the massive beast looked directly into his eyes. She knew no matter how far he has gone he wouldn't cast again jutsu on her. The cat beast was looking him directly in the eye but she lifted her hand in surrender. That's enough. His expression dim, but only a little. Fine, if you say so. As he pat his head on his abdomen, as his long dark sleeve shirt had been burned off his body when he was in the inferno. Luckily, his pants had survived somehow. He placed his hand on his elbow on the seal there as his backpack came out. As he squat down on the ground, as Yujito was still cautious, she split her attention of a technicular bee still body and wondering what her friend was up to. He was angry as his grin stretched from ear to ear, literally, and his body was pulsing. Thick veins were pulsing all around his body. He pulled out a new shirt, a plain white t-shirt, simple color, and a blue sleeve. After putting on the shirt, he placed his entire arm in the bag, showing the storage seal how complex it was. As he then pulled his arm out as he was holding on to something, as he pulled out crystalline, a sniper. I still need my pound of flesh, he said. As he placed it right on his shoulder, fixing it as he looked through the scope, closing one of his eyes. Yujiro broken leg, you see? She has never seen his weapon before, but she knew it was bad news. She used her butt to shield her mentor. Don't do this, Blue, she said. Blue raised the eyebrow in that sick, twisted smile. Don't do what? As he turned around, some distance away he was able to see a wood clone. He looked past the wood clone that Tenzo had made to deal him, and his eyes returned back to Zeki. Predictably, two of the three Yakuza boss are out in public, looking at the carnage. They watch as their underlings try to put out the hell of flames that the bar was under, but they failed to do so. The air was unbreathable, you couldn't even get near to the fire, as it scorched your bones. The two bosses, who thought it was a good idea to set up the Konoha Shinobis and Spear Blue, despite their own laws not to fight, because Minato killed the Iron Boss, little sister. The both of them were down there the iron yakuza and the lightning yakuza and they were heavily guarded by their people but it did not matter at all did it as he took in the wind pressure and the weight quarter for seconds that was all he needed to fire between shots as he fired twice the wood clone felt the needles whistle over his head not even leaving a trucker trail behind that was scary blue possessed a weapon that didn't leave behind a trail of chakra at all the two bosses shatter for a moment as their bodies drop down face first, dead. 
the scales return back into its skin its hair returned back to black its eyes returned back to normal Tenzo the real one already took Yujiro to safety ah much better he said let it never be said that he never let go of a grudge because some way somehow he always got his revenge in the flashback as Minato was in his office Tenzo report had come to him before it reached the third Kage's decks but then though Minato could think of a array of seals that could contain the fire monster for a while but he just wouldn't keep him restrained for too long the three yakuza had made a new order no squabbles at all was to happen as despite anything they were gonna keep it neutral seeing that the last well time two of them got killed and their underlings had to step up and become the new bosses they had followed through to not go through any more problems with konoha but that didn't mean all of were forgiven by then ascending to the position of Hokage, Minato had accidentally leaked the information not to the general public but to the members of the council and Blue, their own friends. That was where the doubt started. Naruto was always the one that kicked back against his superiors when they tried to impose their will on him. Given that mass destruction, they start to walk on eggshells around him to not aggravate him for him to burn the village to the ground. What could they do when he was pissed off? If not even the Hatsabi Jinjulke could, well, stand up to him. Through blood testing and chakra natural gathering and information, the nail on the coffin was sealed when an unknown source in the village had provided Minato with information identity about Blue's mother, Aruchimaru of the Sani, the bloodthirsty, cold hearted woman who had kidnapped and experimented on probably thousands of people from when she was a Chunin in her secret lab in the forest that was exposed by that same unknown source it couldn't be confirmed as Minato said that Naruto was the one that helped his mother escape even though Naruto was denying it Minato placed doubts well it was true Naruto had indeed helped his mother flee Konoha no matter what she done no matter the bad things she did she was still his mother yes she had stopped her inhuman experiments after reconnecting with her child as a personal commitment to be open and honest researching on experiments took time away from her son although the war made it rather difficult for the both of them to connect letters and photos went back though through Aruchimaru snake summoning realm so that it wouldn't be a delay Minato convinced the council that Blue had knew about his mother performing experiments for a long time now and said nothing and that he had the same bloodthirsty animal instinct like his mother and he would burn Konoha down to the ground one day but the Uchiha clan didn't really care Blue had power they respected power these whispers stay within his group of friends it amplified when he had snapped Fukaku's arm and then what Tenzo saw in Zeki that day made it even worse they did not hear the end story for Fukaku only the last part were well near to the last part when he had snapped his arm they did not hear what happened after or before that they just thought he did it on purpose for no particular reason they never bothered to ask Minato didn't even know if he could take him Taijutsu was one of Minato's specialties but could he really defeat the fire monster once he got pissed off it wasn't even about the village security right now it was about personal pride envy Minato clenched the pen in his hand pure envy as the pen snapped to how hard he was clenching it being a genius inventor isn't enough for you that power is wasted on you Minato said Minato didn't really like competition he was used to being the best in the whole village Blue's mere existence was a threat to that a smirk came on the corner of his lips he had won Kushner though the redhead was his wife and there wasn't a damn thing that the blue eye Uchiha could do about it speaking honestly Minato didn't really feel that much affection for her true she was a very stunning woman with curves and most men would fall head over heels there was no doubt that he wasn't attracted to her yes he was as she was a very attractive person being the one that had claim over her body and soul gave Minato a tingling feeling in his chest at the end of the day he could go home and dress her down while others could only stick to their imaginations he didn't like how independent she was as she had her own wealth due to her clan and what was passed down and how hot-blooded she was as well and how natureful she was but she was his yes she was his Blue might have liked Kushin for the longest time, but she was his. He got to his feet and smiled in his face. 
He wasn't planning on going to Kushina's get together, but seeing that Naruto was there, he wanted to rub that victory in his face. Kushina was his. Other victories would come soon after. He wanted to say that becoming Hokage was one, but Naruto wasn't interested in being Hokage if they didn't leave. He buzzed for his secretary as a woman came in his office soon after. Cancel all my meetings and reschedule them for this week, except for tomorrow. As he threw on his white, Red Flames Hiori, signing off on an order for fortifications of the village cemetery and tell Donzo to meet me first thing tomorrow morning. He will know why. I'm sure he won't be late. Yes, sir. I'll be off, he said. With that, he was gone. At the same time, third floor bathroom in the Whirlpool Mansion as Naruto turned on the tap as he splashed water on his face as he took in a breath in and a breath out. They're getting on my nerves. No point to allowing them to get under your skin, he felt to himself. As he held on to the sink, no point of letting that weasel under your skin. He took off his glove when he saw his nails were getting longer and his skin, the scales, started to appear. It started to appear on his other arm as well. He looked up as his reflection stared back at him, grinning wickedly. Black scales crept down from his eyes towards his chin and a fork light lizard tongue crept out from his mouth. As his hair turned dark yellow, resembling feathers, his eyes did not shift, but the eyes that looked back at him were haunting. They were soulless. Hmm. Standing in Kushina's expensive bathroom, that was all he said as he looked towards the reflection. I should probably take up smoking. He didn't pay much attention to how his reflection tilted his head towards the side. Or I can make a target range somewhere in the village for my practice with crystalline to ease the tensions off my shoulders. Sex isn't helping anymore. His head snapped in the door, and in a second later there was a knock. Naruto, the voice of Kagashi could be heard. Blue turned back towards reflection as it was gone, replaced by the normal him. As he returned his gloves. What is it, Kagashi? Minato Sensei is here. Naruto paused, halfway to put on his gloves. And why should I care? He asked. Just giving you a heads up, man, said Kakashi. As he pulled out his small orange book. Don't do anything rash. He didn't get a reply. It might not seem like it, Naruto, but I've got your... The door opened up as Kakashi had to prevent himself from falling, seeing that he was leaning up against it. Cut the crap, Kakashi. As Kakashi turned, as Blue tilted his head. Right now we're way past that point. I want to help, man, said Kakashi. I'm good, said Blue. As he pushed past the man. As Naruto stopped halfway at the stairs when he heard the people greeting Minato, like he was the best thing to arrive in their world. He had a cheerful smile, basking in their praise. Minato looked over the crowd as both of their eyes clashed. Naruto, hey, he called out. As all of his friends turned, Minato placed her arm around Kushina's waist. Kushina here said that you made us some hot pot. Blue didn't say anything for a few seconds. Before he placed a hand in his pocket, as he scratched his cheek with the other. Yeah, I did, he said. The others went quiet as he looked at Blue and then looked back at Minato. Minato motioned for Blue to come over. How about we try some together? My wife has been speaking nothing but good things about your cooking. No one called the eye twitch that Minato let off. What do you say? Everyone got on edge as Kushina watched them as they all waited for Blue to fall off. Let's do something. Minato wanted Naruto to stay. After all, he wanted time to push his buttons, to drive him mad, to bring out that monster that was inside of him. Not yet, he said to himself. Before he officially lost his shit, he needed to make sure that Itachi was in a good place. And his two accountants giving specific detail to ensure that his nephew was in a good place, physically and mentally and financially. His sister and her husband was doing a very good job, not in his opinion. He need to make sure if he died in the process, his mother wasn't going to do anything crazy that would endanger her life. He need to make sure his contacts remain as firm and strong and his nephews would gain them once he was ready. He needed a week. Just one week. Blue smiled darkened, his eyes closed. You know what, Minato? I was just heading home, he said. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I want to chat for a bit. Yeah, right, said Naruto. Kushina looked at him, moving away from her husband, as Minato frowned for the slightest moment. Let me see you off. No, no, said Blue. As he came down from the bottom step, as everyone's eyes were set on him, stay, entertain your guests, he said. 
I'll see myself off. As he opened the door, I'll see you later, she said, not caring that her husband was looking at her strangely and a small blush over her nose. The others didn't seem to notice their attention was on Naruto making his way out of the hallway door. Kushina clasped her hands together, feeling desperate, as she didn't want to lose him again, not after getting him back. Blue, she said. He smiled as he closed the door behind him with a click. Leaping over Kushina gate and landing, he patted his stomach once. I'm hungry, he said, as he made his way into Konoha in search of any open diner. But guys, we'll be in this episode right here. If you want to see next part of to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. But I'm over for now. See you guys soon. Peace.